Hello folks, welcome back to Cougar Talk with Cougars Bay Christmas Edition. So this is the weekly talk that we just kind of go on the forums, talk about what's going on and, and such. So the first order of business is we <laughs> we have people bitching and moaning about is a plus just, you know, getting a little bit of a rehaul because we just lost, you know, DLCs. Um, Sparta XOXO says they probably won't lower the price because these corporations rarely do, but no matter what the chapter content turns out to be, the fact of the matter is we just lost two dungeons in a story DLC zone. And the final one, we didn't even get an arena, and this year also includes no coin homes. Not ends, an unprecedented decision. Will plus subscriber get anything that represents his lost value? How's the dungeon DLC a story DLC are just gone? Um, to be honest, it's, I don't know, like, I really do think we really don't need anything in compensation for that. There's other things that we can be compensated for. In my opinion, ESO Plus is basically the craft bag. Like, I look at it for the craft, for the craft bag and the space that you get in the game. The content is kind of like a little icing on top of the cake. The little cherry on top. So... While I do, I get it. People are like, oh, you know. Yeah, we it sucks. We're losing stuff. Um, that doesn't mean that it's, you know, like it's stuff they need to give us back for. So, uh, if that makes sense. And White Coat Syndrome says, free with paid purchase is not free. It's a discount. You still have to pay it. And as it was bundling the, with the chapter, it's money directly out of pocket and not something you can buy with crowns you might already have. Um, Carly says, I haven't subscribed myself and I enjoyed the larger chapters of the past. To me, the content seemed larger and more immersive than what we got with the year-long system. Or Stadium is a good example of that quality. It's still one of my favorite chapter zones in the game. As for the housing, as someone that has 30 plus homes, I'd be happy with one quality home per year if they gave people the option to purchase with coins or crowns. That way, everybody has a chance to purchase a new home if they choose. This is a great game, and I personally wouldn't mind them revamping some of the older zones, dungeons, and quests to reinvigorate the game. Quality over quantity is a winner every time. I agree. Like, quality over quantity is definitely a winner. If this game can be great quality wise i would not mind um waiting for a chapter like two or three months later it's not that big deal folks i'd rather eso get the i guess the attention that it needs um and what they just put out with that letter if they choose to do what they said they're going to do then um you know i'm i'm all for it like i'm applauding Sauce for that so there you go yeah like lucas Craden says here if it means better quality content i will happily take that loss i will happily take that loss as well so um and i mean some people are like well you shouldn't have had to take the loss there's you know games like final fantasy that basically um are, are better but for final fantasy i think you have to pay 14.99 a month anyway to play it um so, yeah, take that loss, but not everybody has ESO Plus in ESO, so I get it. <clears throat> um, Zero fan says, I'm a subscriber and I see it as Lost Valley. I'm not sure what it is about games that make subscribers more willing to let the Valley subscription erode when they wouldn't do so with another type of product. For example, if you got 10 perks this part of a subscription and we're suddenly told that you're only going to get six but the price isn't going down i'm sure most would have something to say about that but not with esl plus yes the craft bag is probably the most valuable part of the subscription for most players i also like the increased bank space and i like access to the dlcs that's been enough for me to shell out for esl plus what i could be spending on three triple a games or many more non triple a games per year and that's on top of the major chapter releases every year. Now, the DLC access is being considerably watered down going forward. One DLC and one dungeon at that. 
frankly not think it's part of this new direction, so I should reevaluate re ESO Plus and its benefits. Why should consumers keep paying for it when it's being watered down? When you have a one-trick pony like the craft bag, the danger is that a motivated player can figure out how to do how to do without, um, as many have, and skip the subscription or decide that yeah they can't get along without the craft bag. But ESO Plus is just too expensive for that, so bye bye ESO. Okay, come on now, like. <sighs> This is just frustrating to say. Like, I get it, folks. And I mean, maybe, to be honest, maybe reevaluating re ESO Plus and its benefits. Like, I could, I could uh, stand behind that. But I think it's fine. Like, if anything, it's fine. I really do think it's okay. Um, if they're going to provide us with higher quality content and less bugs, you know, like more time to fix stuff and whatnot. I'm okay with paying that $15 a month with what we have uh, going forward. So there you go. All right, so the next one is um, Skuma says, if you ask the ESO community why they log in every day to play the game, many players will say it is because they get to play hang with their friends. Even through disappointing changes, game breaking bugs or even unplayable lag, Many choose to log in to have a good time with their friends in relation to the score motivation to play the game. The game's high proportion of content devoted to the single player experience has been detrimental to the majority of the player base. People log into ESO for the multiplayer experience. There are vastly better single player RPG experiences out there, that's true. If ESO wishes to retain players, the content should encourage making new friends and the stickiness that comes with the new network effect. Um, I don't, I don't know. They should limit content, like uh, Rasuma says, limiting content to that which can only be completed by a group is not the way ESO wishes to go. They need to appeal to a broad market as possible, and that includes those who prefer to go solo. I don't know if you guys remember, but. Cragworm used to be a group content zone, um, and you needed to have, um, I think like two or three people to get, to clear that zone. And, uh, there's some quests that were tied behind, you know, players standing in like a little tile in the other place, standing in the other tile and the other place standing in the tile. So, and they changed that. Um, they changed that for solo content players that just don't want to socialize and there's people in the world that just don't care about um about that you know they they just said okay it's i i don't want this i don't you know i don't want to play with somebody somebody else i want to play by myself like this is the rpg game that i played you know paid for and i want to play it by myself and i agree like you know they should they should that's why Craglone was changed, so, uh, and, and it's true, a lot of the ESO community, they log in every day to play with their friends, don't get me wrong, that, that is a true statement, and that's part of the reason why I log in quite a bit, is to play with friends, have fun, and, you know, get a good time going, but, yeah, limiting the content to group plays, it's definitely not the way, um, you know, it is not the single player friendly content that might be driving people away. It's it's the the forums in it. I mean, it is, but I really, I mean, and the this uh, zero fan says the moment this game focuses on group content, I'm gone. We have a good balance of group versus solo content right now. No need to rock that boat. See that that's perfectly um, that's perfectly notable right here. Um, you don't you don't need to rock that boat. So there's absolutely no reason to rock that boat. Um, and the next one is King Jude says, important needed economy changes for ESO. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I'm not even gonna read this because I'll let you guys read it. Um, Players should be able to find market boards in every country or central trading island that all guild traders in the game are linked. So basically, is an auction house. Like, auction house, the market board, it's the same shit. The thing is, auction house the lets you bid on the stuff, and it's time-based where 
the market board is basically saying um here we're gonna undercut everybody um because that's that's literally what you're what you're asking for people to have um and we already have bots in this game that will find themselves into um guilds and such and i mean it, it's a nice idea and all but it just it's not gonna happen like i get it they you know the alternative is using a function outside of the game such as ttc um and console we don't have that so um and i mean he does say the game should still require a guild to purchase a guild trader in order to sell products as usual um this change will make every guild trader a prime location but <laughs> it's not the prime location itself it's like you're literally racing to the bottom you're gonna kill the economy like this like less inflation um yeah you're getting <laughs> look at the inflation now the tempering alloys like you can get them for 1500 gold a piece if you know the right people and like 2k a piece in the traders that's you're looking at probably maybe like 800 gold a piece and a thousand if you let this happen um and there's still going to be players being scammed or taking advantage so uh undercutting doesn't stop sales it only slows sales players who get undercut get sales faster while players who don't budge still sell but not as fast oh my goodness this you need if you guys don't understand why you, we don't want market boards it's because it's horrible like it will kill the economy in this game i'm telling you um it's it's not even worth it and belial 5221 eso an auction house and central market board are just the same things just one is time, one is not. Those are how bot farmers destroy the economy. Since they don't care about high prices, just making the gold for third-party websites to sell to. Bots in other games are almost impossible to remove because one goes away and another five comes back. Especially in free or almost free games. These centralized is the same as real life shopping experience. You check online, go to stores, and hope it's available when you get there. Also, these centralized spots have less places to sell, and if it looks suspicious, easier to flag and remove the guilds, which have been done in the past. Also, the high guild trader costs are a good goal sink in the game. Thank you. That's what it is. It, it's a gold sink to remove lots of gold out of the game, and why economy stays mostly stable. It can be overwhelming, confusing, or difficult at first, but doesn't take too long to figure it out and start selling and enjoying the profits for things you need to buy the guild traders are a gold sink imagine if we didn't have if we didn't have that if let's say the guild trader prices go down um to the way they were way back when i started like i remember way rest was like you can buy morgue for a mill and uh, you can buy um the the tree for like three mil and if you were spending more you might as well go to mournhold for five mil like that's how much they were way back in the day but there's a lot more players there's a lot more gold so you need to sink a lot more obviously these trader prices are way way off from what they are now um so yeah there you go um, under your system, how would quartermasters function? Right now, quartermasters are pretty useless as they don't get much traffic. If they linked into your new trader system, their value would dramatically increase as guilds could potentially save millions each week by just owning a location in Cyrodiil. Most of the time, rather than betting on a trader, this would potentially increase traffic in Cyrodiil somewhat, but would also act as a significant damper on the ability of guild traders to sink gold. Exactly. I mean... What happens in PvP when you claim a castle? Like, is that quartermaster gonna go into the auction boards too? Um, you know, no. If it's just guild traders, you might ram into issues with guilds buying excessive amount of traders or going under with the changes. Most of those lower level trade guilds I have been in 
or bordering on being broke with the exception of the guilds that were a larger guild's baby trading guild. If the cost of the cheap locations goes up, much many of the lower tier ones might die. And the larger guilds might just buy them up. If I don't like trading guilds policies, I can easily join another guild. If you end up with 30 guilds and they're sock puppets owning the majority of the traders, you might not have that option. The people that that like the current system are very local are very vocal because it is very profitable for many of them. So you aren't going to get much support on the forums. Don't get down if people on forums don't like your ideas as forums tend to attract people with strong opinions and those that spend a lot of time in forums end up being a bit grouchy. The more stars you see, the higher chance we already said all we have to say that is of much value. Um, Mandrika says the guild trader system in ESO is one of the few things that is perfect as is. It was designed the way because of good reasons. I sincerely hope that they don't change anything. The only exception being the fact that when you bid for a trader, there's no way to undo the action if you put by mistake a wrong amount. Maybe they could allow to undo the action for a short period of time and only if the bid's closing time window is far enough. Because also other aspects of the game were designed in a certain way for good reasons and we learned from past actions that more often than not, when that well thought fundamental aspects of the game were changed, maybe the intentions were good, but the outcomes were not. Letting us be nostalgic, nostalgic about the good times. I mean, I think them putting the 10 bid system is pretty nice. Um, the only thing that I really do not like, um, and you don't see this much on on PC, is on console. But um, I really do not like the fact that we have five girls to choose from. I think. If we have one guild, people will be more loyal. But, um, I mean, that's that's something that I've talked about with other people as well. So, But there you go. Keep the same economy changes. Like, we don't need economy change. Like, come on. Get rid of the bots. If you get rid of the bots, then then I'm, I'm okay with, you know, some stuff. Um, that's that's big to be honest that's really the biggest problem is if you can get rid of the bots i would support something like this a little bit more all right so next one is gallon treasure maps and the skid lean drop oh my goodness um this guy is saying it feels like sauces and want people to even have the skin um yeah i mean we're still on that so folks just wait just wait just wait for the gallon event to come the double drops you'll get more treasure map leads like just wait it'll get better sell the treasure maps if you get them now wait for the skin patience is a virtue we have elder scrolls the movie so would you want to see a movie says sama 666 based off the video game i saw warcraft loved it tomb raider was also pretty good resident evil was just good kick-ass fun thoughts i think it could be done with eso based off the early lore late lore graphics today are amazing and storytelling so many ideas um i mean um yeah, it's it's a touchy subject for me i think i like the the old lore like way way back to the elder scrolls games way back in the day um i mean there's so much lore out there that you could potentially make it out of, about anything i the only way i would say yes to this is if it's done correctly and i just don't want to be disappointed and if you do a game if you do a thing like that you're gonna get disappointed so eh, yeah um, and then Czechoslovakia says, personally, I find games, uh, video games turned into movies tend to struggle because video games and movies as mediums have different strengths and weaknesses and content design for one medium frequently isn't a good fit for another medium. Video games frequently take advantage of choice as well as the experience of investing effort and time to create deeper connections. The first time or two, I played the main storyline for you, so I liked parts of it, and the ending felt really good after I had struggled with some of the earlier parts. 
my earlier characters with DC, which I feel made parts of the story better, is I spent more time with some of the characters. Nowadays, it doesn't really work as well because it comes at you in more of a burst and the combat difficulty in game has shifted enough to the late power boost. It doesn't really feel as special as you don't really feel like you have as much of a connection to the characters because it can be a relatively short experience. The monologue bits are as also age rather poorly in my honest opinion. Um, yeah, to be honest, if it's done correctly and if you find somebody to write it that's really good at screenwriting um, and you find a director and a cast that's just really good, I mean, you're talking about millions upon millions upon millions upon millions. This would have to be a very expensive movie for it to be worth my time. Um, I could see it, but... If not, then just leave it alone, because, like, uh, yeah, no. No. So, suggestion. Give us player crafting rates. I suggest to implement a board where player can post requests for crafting items, including required traits, enchantments, minimum quality, and optionally style. Also for furniture items, and an indication what the player is ready to pay for it. The requesting player would have to prepay this amount, which would be handed to the crafter upon completion. When our crafter accepts a player writ, he could craft the item, turn it into where the normal master crafting writs are handed in, and the requesting player would receive the item in his mail, while the crafter would get the money per mail too. A player writ would be active for 30 days on the board and disappear afterwards. The prepaid money would be returned to the player per mail, just like it happens for items not being sold in via guild store. Um, Blood again says, well, it could be buggy as hell, but I love the whole idea. It really can give the crafting economy a new life. I have more points to add. Crafter can't get more than one red at a time like the other reds. Player crafting reds has a time limit for crafter to do, let's say, two hours. If abandoned by will or by timeout, you can't get the same red again for 15 minutes. Both are to avoid griefing by someone's red holdings. Um, I agree. I actually like the points right here. I, I do like that. Um, and I mean, Kitsune Shuju says Warcraft did something similar, but from what I've seen, almost no one uses it. It's still a neat feature, though. Um, I really like that. Like, this, I could get behind. Um, even if not many people use it, it's still a nice thing to have. Um, there's players out there that don't have guilds and don't have a way to, to get their stuff. And, you know, if they want a specific furniture item then, um, you know, they can't find it in the guild traders and whatnot. That's pretty good. It gives furniture crafters and actual crafters a way to sell their items um, and other things. And, you know, this Anduin says the player would be active for 30 days and then disappear. So I, I really like that. I really like this whole, you know, prepaid money would be returned and, you know, the, the way it's done, this is a great idea. I could get behind this 100%. So, Cinemax, this is cool and something. This is a quality of life um, thing you can make. Um, I don't know how the coding would work, but if, if this is doable, a lot of people would probably be happy about this. So, there you go. Suggestion, limit guild activities in Guild Finder. Say you're like me, Dragonlord573. Someone who's been hoping to find a good role-playing guild. You go into the guild finder and set the search filters for role-playing guilds. And it's trading guild after trading guild. It's PvP guilds, housing guilds, guilds you don't know the purpose of. If there is an actual honest role-playing guild, you never know because every single guild in the guild finder indiscriminately sets all their guild activities as all the activities. Allowing guilds to select activities that they don't actually take part in does nothing but clog up the guild finder and makes other guilds that actually fit the filter get lost. Limiting the additional activities that guilds can select in the guild info to maybe a maximum of three would improve the guild finder and help lesser known guilds as actually game members. Um, add to that the lack of any search um, by guild name and it makes finding any guild in game extremely difficult. I really do think they should be able to add the search the guild by name. Um, but, um, as far as the limiting three, uh, no, there's guilds that do all kinds of stuff. So just to limit that, that's, you know, there's guilds that do role play and that do trade and that do PVP, that do PVE, that do group content. Like, 
you're you're gonna no. Um, that no. I mean, Guild Finder could use a major overhaul, but it's not for that. Now, um, in the Guild Finder, when you go and post your guild, there is a thing that you can write to let people know what your guild is all about. If you're going to be a role-playing guild, put it there. Like, come on now. Like, there's your spot to put it. If that's going to be your big thing, then there you go. But... This is fine. Anyways, um, make sure you guys check out our Patreon and check out our uh, awesome stuff that we have there. And of course, our wonderful Discord boosters and boss style, Cougars Bay, Scoring Music 09, X Reading X, and Mark 271. And folks, Cougar City wants you to, to join us in our weekly activities. So we have obviously weekly traders. Our trader this week is Aiden and Wayrest, the best trader in the game, brought to you by Cougar City because we like to do things big in Christmas time. And um, that's a big Christmas gift to the guild this year. We are donation based as always, but if you guys know, the better the donations, the better guild trader spots in the future. We do have Monday night events. Our next Monday night event is this coming Monday. And if you guys get on Discord, you will see that um, there's a whole section for Monday Night Madness. So check that out. We have beginner and advanced prog teams. Our beginner team is always looking for subs because they are just starting out and they're getting together to embark on a journey that the advanced prog team has done <clears throat> in the past. It's a really good journey, a really good way to make friends, folks. And I'm so excited for them to begin that journey. They are starting some vet content pretty soon. And they're going to be awesome. Our, our advanced prog team, we're always looking for subs. We do have one spot available right now, um, which is a DPS spot. If you would like to have that spot and are available Tuesday through Thursday at... Uh, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, then you can definitely DM Cougars Bay or JPY248. We also have a PvP night coming up in New Year's, so if you're going to be around for New Year's, then that's pretty awesome. And Tales of Tribute, which we just finished our Tales of Tribute big tournament, and Bolt, MFQ Bolt, was the winner of that. But check out the other Tales of Tributes in the uh, future for that. So thank you guys for watching again. Make sure you guys hit like and subscribe in our channel to get those awesome YouTube uh, analytics that we love and goodbye.